This is not meth. It's just some hippie crystal that I'm using to clickbait you. Well, I guess hippie crystal could be some sort of code name for meth, but regardless, there will be no meth made in this video. Instead, I'll be making something much better. At, at least for some people. Mercury Fulminate. You may be familiar with this stuff if you've ever seen the show Breaking Bad. When Walt is enraged from not getting the money Tuco owes him, he heads to his place with a bag of this stuff disguised as meth and then goes insano style by blowing the place up in retaliation. This is not meth. Now, I won't be making an entire 50 gram crystal like he did that's capable of blowing up an entire building, but I will be making enough, ladies and gentlemen, to demonstrate its, ex its explosive properties and the dangers around making it. Now before I get into it, I must say that almost everything about making this stuff is kind of very dangerous. Mercury fulminate is known to explode unexpectedly from heat, shock, and static. So don't make it yourself, especially in large quantities. I, on the other hand, can just pretend like I know what I'm doing. So with that being said, let's get into it. I'll start off by adding 10 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid to a beaker. Now I'm going to add about a gram of metallic mercury to the acid. The mercury is reacting with the nitric acid to form mercury nitrate. It also generates heat and a lot of nitrogen dioxide, which is very toxic, so you should try this outside or under a fume hood. I'm going to shake it around occasionally until the mercury is fully dissolved. Once the mercury is fully dissolved, you can move on to the next step and add 15 milliliters of absolute ethanol to an Erlenmeyer flask. A round bottom flask would be preferred, but I don't have one, so this will have to do for now. Now you could add your mercury nitrate solution. If the reaction never starts, you could try warming the flask in a bath of hot water. But never use an open flame to heat it up, as ethanol is very flammable. Now the white fumes that are forming are nitrogen oxide gases, which is extremely toxic if breathed in. When the reaction is complete, all the fumes will dissipate and you should be left with a light gray precipitate on the bottom of the flask. This is your mercury fulminate. Now there's still a lot of nitric acid, among other things we don't want in there, so we're going to clean it out in a process called decanting. Now it should be clean. It's finally time to make it go boom, and I'm going to make it go boom in a few different ways. Electricity, uh, a hammer or something, and I want to see if my laser pointer can generate enough heat to detonate it. But before we do that, we need to let it dry out, because it's pretty insensitive to all those things when it's wet. Which is also why it should be stored in a container with water, and also in a place where the water is not going to evaporate. Alright, let's see if electricity will do the trick. Oh yeah, unexpected. I think if I would have let it dry out longer, it would have went off all at once. Now it's time to try it with the hammer and laser pointer. This batch actually came from yesterday when some idiot created a video on how to make mercury fulminate and uh, recorded and edited the entire thing and lost the footage, so what a dummy. All right, I've let it dry out much longer this time, so I should have a much better result for the impact test. Let's try with this pile first. Oh yeah, my ears are ringing like crazy right now. It even detonated the second pile as well. So I guess I can't do the laser test unless I make another batch. After exploding, it released a cloud of mercury, which you see here, as well as nitrogen and carbon oxides. But yeah, that's mercury fulminate. 
It's usually used as a trigger for other explosives in percussion caps and detonators, but recently it's been replaced with other chemicals that are safer in terms of toxicity and stability. So, yeah. God damn it. Finally. 